Well, hello and welcome to That's The Point. This is the series where we talk about construction positioning technology in all of its varied and weird forms. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Corey Meyer and joined today by Jonathan Stickle. What is up, man? Doing good, glad to be here. All right, so here we go. So today we've got prisms on the table, which only means one thing, that we actually have prisms, prisms on the table. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about prisms today. Um, honestly, we're gonna, we're gonna jump into this concept of active versus passive prisms. We've got one each here. Um, and we're gonna talk about that because the nice thing is with Trimble technology, you can choose between these two, these two types of prisms. And we're gonna just talk about the benefits of both um, and help you to better choose which one. Because honestly, this is something we get quite often. Yeah, we do get it a lot in uh, the sales cycle and uh, just uh, you know, customers wanting to know if they're, what, prism to, what prism to choose, if they're making the right decision. And um, the good thing is it's, it's your choice. Yeah, and, and let's start, actually that's a great place to start, is the beginning of this, which is what is a prism? Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually pretty simple, right? Because the biggest thing about a prism is it's a series of mirrors, they're easy to lock onto, um, and, and what we use is the total station uses this to measure consistently um, wherever it's taking a shot. So instead of worrying if you're right on a building corner, or if you're right on a point, the prism takes that out because it stays locked to that, it knows the center point of the prism, and you're able to get that nice consistent shot. Yeah, it's the most common one. It's been around forever. Um, you know, it's, like you mentioned, it's a series of mirrors. Um, it's inexpensive, it's easy to replace. Um, Construction you, inexpensive. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> And, um, but you, you can use it, for, you can mount it for control or for backsight. And honestly, it's just the most accurate way to, uh, to measure. Right, and we've got, we've got a 360 prism here, but normal prisms, passive prisms come in all different shapes and sizes. You've got single prisms, um, like you said, that you can mount for control, permanently mounted on your job site, so you can always go in and get your backsight checks or anything like that, or for control. Um, and honestly, they're just as accurate as any other mm -hmm. type of active prism or anything else. You're not losing any accuracy with a passive prism. So the question then immediately comes like, why? Why do we have an active prism? And I think the easiest answer is the MT-1000, which I'm holding here, um, this has been around Trimble for a very long time, tested in the field. The difference is that it aids you in the tracking side of things. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the MT-1000, it actually has, if you look, you've got the prism mirrors, but then you've also got this row of LEDs on the top and bottom. And these LEDs, while they're mostly infrared, um, you can kind of see them even on camera, you can kind of see a little bit of them illuminated here. Um, but what this does is this allows us to help us track the, t the, 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 the prism as it's moving around the job site. And the, the robot can then do a better job of tracking it. Um, so it's unique. So the total station can then distinguish um, between this prism and some of the other shiny objects on the job site. Mm -hmm. If you've ever laid out with total station, um, using using it, you know that it likes shiny objects, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like it's just like your kitty cat that likes the that <laughs> likes the laser. Um, it likes shiny things, and so so robotic tool stations will chase reflective things. With the MT one thousand, that's greatly reduced uh, because it's actually looking for these infrared LEDs um, on the project. So if you're thinking about like maybe vests or carts or you know carts with with shiny rebar or <laughs> shiny rebar, I wish we had that. Um, so shiny conduit or anything like that, uh, lifts, all that stuff, chrome on bumpers, all that stuff it can be can be catnip uh, mm -hmm. for a total station. With the MT-1000, it's greatly reduced because it, it already sees and it knows that particular LED, and it's able to do that. Um, it also helps if you're not the only total station out on the site, too. That's a great point. Yeah, actually, these are channelized. So we can actually select the channel here, and you could actually run an MT-1000 right next to another MT-1000, as long as you have a different channel on there, it's mm -hmm. emitting a different uh, frequency there with the LEDs, and it can actually tell the difference. So yeah, you can run two layout setups right next to each other, and you could lay out all day and not get it to lose track. So that's actually a huge, huge difference. Um, so it's really about understanding where your job site is more than anything else when you're choosing between active and passive. Yeah, and I mean, I, th that's really the key point. Um, if you're on a bustling, busy job site with a lot of workers and other total stations, active the active prism is going to be the way to go, and it's going to save you a lot of time. Um, if you're like the lone wolf on deck all by yourself around an open field, right. um, the passive prism is fine. Like we mentioned before, um, from an accuracy perspective, they're both going to give no you accuracy. Yep. Um, just the um, active is better if you're on a busier site. And that's that's really it. I mean, and the nice thing is with Trimble, you get the flexibility of choosing between these. Active, passive, it's your call. So of course, don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss all of our latest tips, tricks, and pointers. Jonathan, thanks, man. Yep. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on That's the Point.